CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. The provincial government is furious tonight with the company that built the new Portman Bridge after falling chunks of ice shut down the brand new crossing in the storm on the lower mainland yesterday. Two people were injured, as many as 100 vehicles were damaged as ice plunged under the cars and crashed through windshields. Today, the company that operates the span says it will cover the driver's insurance deductibles. The province says it relies heavily on the expertise of the companies that it contracts to build such mega projects to meet government safety standards and says the builders should have known this would be a problem. The transportation minister says there has to be a major review with the contractor to make sure this doesn't happen again. We will be looking to the contractor to provide us with not only a long-term permanent solution that ensures this will never ever occur again but also for an immediate fix to the problem so that we're able to ensure that the bridge is open and indeed safe for the traveling public. The province says the $3.3 billion contract with Kiewit Flatiron General Partnership specified that ice and snow could not and would not build up on the cable system. The contractors issued a statement today saying they're working closely with necessary stakeholders to identify and implement a solution as quickly as possible. Well, we are just uh, four days away now from the 100-day mark of the National Hockey League strike, and today the NHL announced more cancellations. Games wiped out through the middle of January. Desperate times for NHL hockey, so some Victoria fans have taken desperate measures to try to help save the season. CTV's Jordan Cunningham has the story. He joins us live with more. Jordan. Hudson, thank you. The Ledbetter stalemate has left hockey fans feeling left out and more than a little ignored. And in Langford, a group of fans is striking back, literally. These rec hockey players, including former Colwood Mayor David Saunders, has sent demands to the NHL and its Players Association saying they're going on strike if the puck hasn't dropped before January 26. Crazy, you say? Well, they're dead serious. I think the fans have a bigger stake than what they're representing. The NHL come to all the municipalities and all the cities asking for protective services, asking for infrastructure, and uh, that's on the backs of the taxpayers. And you can't exclude taxpayers from negotiations that impact their daily lives. We're going on strike and, and you know, we know lots of people just in this area, but it's the social media that's really going to help us out with this whole thing. These fans will totally turn their back on the NHL if their demands aren't met and they're hoping other fans will join the crusade. Hudson, their Twitter handle is at the fan on strike. They've got some very interesting things to say, also some very funny things to say. Haven't lost their sense of humor and we'll uh, hear the full story later on in sports. All right, Jordan Cunningham. Jordan, thanks. All right. Well, it may not be the end of the world, but if you had to fill up your gas guzzler today, it sure is a pain, a pinch at the pump as the price of gasoline around Greater Victoria took a big jump this afternoon. How's this for for an early Christmas present from the big gas companies. Just in time for your holiday travels, the price at the pump jumped 13 cents per liter in one fell swoop from $1.9.9 .9 to what they're pumping tonight at $1.22.9 per liter. That increase marks the end of a relatively uh, low price period for the past several months. As always, to find the lowest prices, or in this case, the highest prices in your area, go to gasbuddy.com. Well, after a seven-month search process and a unanimous approval by the Board of Governors, the University of Victoria today named its new president. And the board didn't have to look too far. Incoming President Jamie Castles has been with UVic since 1981. He replaces outgoing President David Turpin, who is stepping down after 13 years as president of UVic. Castles has served at the university in various roles over the past three decades including professor, dean of law, and chief academic officer. I've been an academic for 32 years now. For the last 15 years, I've gradually assumed increasingly senior leadership roles in the, uh, in, uh, in the university, and I found that I enjoy it. Uh, I love working with people, with teams. The days go fast, and it's a place where you can really feel that you're making a contribution. Castles says he's ready for the new challenge. He begins his five-year term as UVic president this July. It's going to cost you more next time you renew your passport. Beginning Canada Day, the cost of a five-year passport in Canada jumps from $87 to $120. And for the first time, you will be able to renew that document for 10 years. That'll set you back $160. Bucks. Passport Canada says it needs the increase to maintain current operations and to offer security-enhanced travel documents. Well, the morning of the victims in last week's deadly school shooting in Connecticut continued today with yet more funerals. Five more victims from Sandy Hook Elementary School were laid to rest. 
And as the tight-knit community continues to grieve, the debate is raging in the U.S. over how to stop further acts of gun violence. That took center stage in Washington today. Vice President Joe Biden met with law enforcement representatives in the first meeting of U.S. President Barack Obama's task force on gun violence. Even if he says we could only save one life, we have to take action. I just hope in some way this is like sort of a tipping point in some way to really do something, um, you know, meaningful. The powerful NRA, the National Rifle Association, will talk about gun control tomorrow. In a written statement released this afternoon, the NRA said it is prepared to offer meaningful contributions to make sure another shooting like this never happens again. That word went out this week. They'll hold a news conference for the first time tomorrow. A massive chunk of tsunami debris has washed ashore on a remote beach in Olympic National Park in Washington. It's believed to be part of a dock from Japan. The debris was spotted on Tuesday by the U.S. Coast Guard. The Washington State Marine Debris Task Force has sent a team to inspect the dock. It will look for any invasive species clinging to it and confirm whether the dock did drift across the Pacific from the March 2011 tsunami in Japan. The dock appears to be very similar to a Japanese dock that washed ashore last June brought across the ocean by the tsunami, following the tsunami, coming ashore at Newport, Oregon. Salvation Army got some much needed help for their kettle campaign today. Donations, as we've told you, for the kettles have been down this year, but retailers are chipping in. Walmart today matched donations at all of its stores today. The Walmart Fill the Kettle Day is the largest single fundraiser of the year for the Salvation Army. Walmart will match donations across Canada up to $100,000. In Nanaimo, the campaign gets a huge boost. Last year, the store at Woodgrove raised $7,000 on this day. This is huge because this is what helps support the programs we do. Our Christmas hampers, our hampers throughout the year, our emergency shelter, all the activities we do downtown Nanaimo, this is where it helps. We rely on the Salvation Army to do what they do all year long, and if we're going to delegate that responsibility to them, then we need to support them in doing that and giving them money. And some familiar faces on the Sally Ann Kettles on the South Island today, including at the Bay Centre, where I had a chance to ring the bells this afternoon and collect donations from generous passers-by. The Bay Centre itself also made a sizable donation. The coins tossed into the shopping centre's fountains throughout the year have been gathered up, saved up and tallied, and donated to the Sally Ann. People have some fun with the fountain. They always you know, throw a couple of dimes or something in there. And uh, like I said, it's not our money. It's just money that's been collected. We clean it out, and then we find organizations that are in need and could use that money. Thanks to everybody who made a donation at the Bay Centre or wherever you were today. If you can't make it to a kettle, you can uh, donate online at fillthekettle.com or by texting HOPE1000 to 45678, and that will make a $5 donation. Please dinner, please. Coming up. Other people doing good things today. Volunteers served up 1,000 pounds of turkey, that's about 450 kilograms, for the Our Place annual community Christmas meal. As many as 1,000 people were expected to enjoy turkey, potatoes, stuffing, and all the fixings by the time the meal was over, along with pies donated by the community. It, it creates, you know, an opportunity for them to enjoy Christmas, um, get out of the cold, you know, have a nice meal, some nice community with people and feel that they belong and they're cared for and loved. So I think they really, really appreciate it. It means a lot to be around people this time of year. A lot of people are struggling these days. And it's, a, it's a great help to everybody. Being homeless, I don't have a kitchen to cook turkey, uh, gravy, nothing. So it really warms my heart. The Our Place Drop-In Centre will be warming hearts on Christmas Day as well. It'll be open from 10 o'clock until 4 in the afternoon. Well, Canadian Blood Services set up a one-day clinic at the Fairmont Empress Hotel today to make it more convenient for you to give the gift of life this holiday season. Canadian Blood Services partners with the Fairmont Empress and with KPMG every year to set up this temporary clinic. It says the holiday rush can make it a desperate time of year. A lot of our regular donors that we depend heavily on throughout the year are away or with family and friends, and so it's it's an important time to reach out and to get those people that maybe hadn't done it for a while or have never done it. You know, it's one of those uh, things, especially at Christmas, when you think of the greatest gift that you could give someone. Um, I know it's a bit cliche, but uh, truly, you know, give the gift of life, give the gift of uh, blood is the right thing to do. If you couldn't make it to the Empress today, Canadian Blood Services will be open for the next two weeks at its Saanich Road location across from the Uptown Shopping Centre. It estimates it's going to need 25,000 units of blood across the country to make it through the holiday season. 
There is more trouble on the roads tonight. A crash slowed traffic late this afternoon on the Nanaimo Parkway near the 5th Avenue exit. Happened just before 5 o'clock tonight. A black Hyundai uh, collided with a large transport truck. The 24-year-old woman driving the car was airlifted to the hospital in Victoria, suffering significant head injuries. The driver of the truck suffered a broken wrist. We're looking at it. It appears the uh, truck was doing highway speeds coming up to the intersection. And uh, we have witnesses that uh, say that the vehicle, uh, the Tiburon, went through the red light. Alcohol not believed to be a factor in the crash. There was a traffic slowdown on the parkway. RCMP are still investigating. Charges have now been laid in a drive-by shooting that targeted a home in Nanaimo. In late July, police were called to the 600 block of Nickel Street with reports of multiple gunshots. Mounties say Jeffrey Ode was a person of interest early on in the investigation, but it took until December 5th to gather enough evidence to proceed with charges. There's a number of participants in this file, and there's a, a quantity of information that had to be gone through, including witness statements, forensic evidence. And once that was all put together, the package was forwarded to Crown, and they deemed fit to issue the warrant for Mr. Ode. Ode turned himself in at the Nanaimo Provincial Courthouse after a bail hearing. He was released on several conditions. Scheduled to appear in court on the charges in January, he faces charges of mischief endangering life and unlawfully discharging a firearm.